Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the team here of the New Art School and Design the Ducks podcast. Our guest today is Anastasios Maragianis. Welcome, Anastasios. <laughs> Hello, Lefteris. How are you? Fantastic to have you here. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. So tell us about you and your work. Um, no, yeah, that's a good question, actually. Um, I am a designer, a uh, graphic designer. However, at the moment, I am the uh, deputy head of the School of Design here at the University of Greenwich, where I am in London, isolated. Uh, and, um, and yeah, it's, uh, I can't wait to go back to the studio so to, to teach. Um, I, my work generally focuses on uh, diversity and inclusion. Uh, I'm looking how we can design uh, for uh, with and for others, how to engage people uh, in the design process, how to share uh, our design practices within education uh, spaces or outside academia, how to amalgamate people's uh, unique knowledge into design uh, interventions. Um, and, and I have a great uh, interest in in how design in general acts uh, inclusively, regardless of disability, gender, ethnicity, um, language, or, or age. Fantastic, fantastic. So tell us about your latest project. Um, I, I've been working on this uh, diversity and inclusivity by design for a while now. And... Um, the latest uh, project was uh, a project we did with the High Commission of the Republic of Cyprus here in the UK, where we explored uh, seven uh, designers, researchers. Um, we gathered them and we asked them to um, to respond to uh, an issue or that our society is uh, facing these days. So, for example, one of the works uh, was about how we can engage, how we empower, how we can empower uh, individuals, and how we can um, bring uh, together people that they are either from um, marginalized groups or uh, people that they are isolated. How design can um, help them to become part of 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 the society. So the outcome of this was an exhibition um, in, uh, it's almost a year now. Oh. I can't believe that it time fast, it's gone so fast. So it is almost a year um, where I was um, an exhibition uh, in London and then uh, this uh, moved to different places. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you want me to tell you more about yeah, the project. Please, please, yes. <laughs> So, in general, I mean, um, there are seven uh, different small projects uh, mm -hmm. where um, this exhibition, in a way, put them together. We've been working with the designers for uh, almost a year, and uh, all of the seven people, they had different um, uh, briefs in uh, under the main brief. So, this exhibition was the output, the outcome of the whole work were um, reflected on developments on diversity and inclusivity in the current uh, creative Cypriot landscape. Mm -hmm. So it was an interest uh, in exploring themes involving um, uh, design groups from generic uh, or specific geographical locations uh, or um, focusing on the current modern society and how visual language of communication could uh, shape uh, identities, uh, engaging politics, engaging uh, behaviors, etc. So they all, all the works they had the common objective. Uh, it, it we, which was what is enabled when designers design uh, with uh, and for others, um, and the research outputs uh, they're quite dynamic showing in a way uh, how us as designers can influence people from diverse backgrounds, either uh, refugees or uh, blind people or health, etc. So one of the projects got an award 
in the Chicago STA Awards. That was fantastic by Alexandros Kosmidis. Um, the overall exhibition actually as a way to communicate the research to the wider public. Uh, got an award actually last month uh, from uh, in the International Institute of Information Design. So, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Tell us about your, your path to education. How did you get into education? Right. Uh, you know these weird people that they are like very young and then suddenly they say, you ask them, what do you want to do when you grow up? <laughs> and then they reply to you, I want to be an academic. That was me. Ah. Uh, so I remember when I was studying uh, graphic design back in Greece, um, my personal tutor asked me, um, so what do you want to do? And lots of, of graphic designers at my age, I was 19 maybe at the time, and they would say, I want to be working in an advertising studio. I want to be doing this and that. I don't want to say I want to be doing logos because this is not what design is. Um, but I said, I want to be an academic. And the reason for that is because I had an experience when I was uh, before going to university where I felt that my tutors, bless them, um, they did some work, but actually I was expecting more from them. I was expecting mm -hmm. to be more inclusive in the design process mm -hmm. so i thought that i need to change that so but you also did a master's uh, in design yes i did my master's in design and i did also my phd in uh in uh computational technologies and design mm -hmm. where i looked um uh readability and design inclusion mm. through my doctorate so how do you degree. combine the the practical aspect of all your of all your experience to to the more theoretical aspect well it is uh, it is a challenge i mean um i don't see a disconnection i see mm -hmm. a connection between theory and practice of course um so i don't know if you know um perhaps you're aware that the terms practice based practice led uh, practice research, research as practice, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is in the last twenty years changed massively. Yes. So I would just use um, the term um, practice research, where I think it, that is a term that University of London Goldsmiths uh, introduced quite a while ago, where it shows that there is no uh, a gap between the two, and you're trying to find a way to amalgamate the two. I think the practice. Uh, it is informed by theory, and uh, and that and the theory is informed by practice. That's why I think that the Welcome Collection here in London is doing fantastic work because what they're doing is just the exploring art through science, and mm -hmm. it's not a surprise that science informs art or vice versa quite often. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's very interesting. So tell us about the, the um, challenges in education right now. Uh, that you're facing? Well, you mean uh, with uh, COVID-19? Well, we could, we could start from that, yeah. I mean, I mean, we could start from that. There's a lot of little discussion. I mean, I, I was in the group uh, another, another day of a discussion and, and, and somebody from Denmark said, for example, you know, that in the Danish Academy, they are not talking about online at all. They said, okay, we're starting September 100%. Uh, Where is that? In Denmark. Okay, so uh, when do I get the ticket? I'm going now. <laughs> One hundred percent physical, uh, with with social distancing, of course, uh, and the challenges uh, that this has brought. But also, we need to talk about the general challenges of, of design education. I tell you what, uh, Leferis, um, it is there are different challenges based on, as I said earlier, about the project with the Cyprus uh, High Commission, uh, where designers explore geographical locations as part of the design process. And I think the design education challenges, the, uh, um, they are different uh, based where you are. Mm -hmm. As you said, as you said in Denmark, they might have uh, the, the flexibility, I wanna say, so they can go back to the uh, studio because that may, might be that they have the resources. Uh, here in the UK, uh, it's slightly more complicated there is a massive competition in design schools, um, and that obviously will affect the design education. So uh, the universities would like to introduce a blending learning method, mm -hmm. uh, where it means that there's a combination between studio practice and uh, online delivery. 
uh, I would say that design, design is a discipline that is extremely difficult to deliver online. Uh, and from my last uh, few months in isolation, I would say, what I'm, I'm realizing is that it's extremely difficult to uh, maintain the dialogue and the kind of like freedom to step in a crit and say what you think without thinking that uh, people will criticize me or people will record me or people will uh, be able to come back to me. It's like, um, it's like you know, portable devices, uh, technologies where we are at the moment. Like, I mean, Sherry Terkel once said that uh, in her book, We Are Alone Together, we are able to write a text, think about the text, maybe longer than reading the text, send it, and if we don't like it because we think that we did something wrong, we can delete it. So I think that with a, with a physical education, we don't have uh, this kind of uh, fear. We can be true to what we think, to our thoughts. And I think that critical discussion and design thinking, it's extremely difficult to become online. Okay, you can deliver a lecture online, absolutely. You can share some ideas on the textbox, but up to that, the studio practice cannot be replaced. And that's why I think it is um, rare, it's quite rare to find uh, institutions that are offering design programs online. Uh, the Open University is offering, I think, um, a design thinking or program. Mm -hmm. But if you see the curriculum, uh, it's not very um, much focused into the practice. And, uh, and I see you drinking coffee, so I think I should have a sip as well. Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes, I think that um, we, a design education will change. Mm. Um, the arts will be challenged once more. Uh, as because whenever we have a pandemic or a crisis, art and design is the first um, uh, area that will be damaged and will be compromised. Uh, however, I'm sure that then design will be again the, the power to, to, to build again a society, maybe in a few years' time, but yeah, mm. definitely. What about the pre-COVID challenges? The, what about the pre-COVID challenges? Yeah, there's not much difference, to be honest. We now have an excuse <laughs> that we have COVID-19. <laughs> so I don't think that there is a much difference. Mm. I think that, uh, as I said, art and design is compromised because of financial uh, reasons. Mm. Brexit as well, it is mm. an extremely uh, uh, important uh, factor uh, here in the UK. Uh, so, you know what? I mean... Uh, the, 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 the passion and the, the energy in, in design education, especially here in London, is the, um, the amalgamation of different nationalities, different people, mm -hmm. uh, languages. And Absolutely. I think that this is what design is. Design is uh, it's empowering people, identifying themselves, and work with others. And this is when design becomes a global uh, issue, a global discussion, a global element tool to communicate and affect people. So uh, this diversity of voices, mm. it's something which is the heart of design, especially here in the UK, especially in London. So the Brexit, going back to, uh, to pre-COVID-19 situation, um, really damaged this um, uh, approach and you can see that from um, how many people they've been uh, applying to study in the UK mm. uh, and that was a reduced number and I'm sure that this will change the way we teach because you know what in the past you would design for a local community or a local environment and then uh, you have the Instagram that becomes going global and you design something for a global audience However, now, if you are not interacting with designers from, um, from, with international designers within the studio session, that means that you have less knowledge of, of those cultures and it will be extremely more difficult to talk to this culture without knowing them. So then we're going back to the stereotypes. Mm, absolutely, absolutely.
So how can we best support students in this environment, both, both during their studies and, of course, into professional life? Uh, do you mean the online environment, the the blending environment? The what would be your advice if if uh, your students or your graduates or uh, any graduates or students are listening right now? What would you like to tell them uh, to support them either through their studies or uh, from the point of graduation onwards? You know what? It, it's again, it's going back to the diverse um, cohort of students. I mean, mm. uh, obviously. There are different reasons for someone joining uh, design education. Mm. Uh, the, the, without being explicit, though, there are some students that they will join design education because they really think that design is what who they are. Mm. And uh, those people, they will ask for uh, more support. They would like to see themselves uh, growing in the design discipline. As designers, we then have some obviously uh, role models that they would like to follow. And then this is where you feel that the design education becomes uh, a dialogue, like the discussion we have now, which is like a discussion that actually uh, it's more close to what Aristotle is, just because I'm Greek now, I'm going to use the reference. <laughs> so uh, it's like what Aristotle was doing with his uh, peripatetic method. So he was he was he was having discussions with his with his students, and he would uh, walk and he will teach them based on what he what is surrounding what is surrounding them. So uh, it's the same thing when you have people passionate about design, then the discussion comes naturally, mm-hmm. uh, and then you have uh, the students that they will need more support, especially coming from a ground where design was not a priority, and. Um, and then is when you would need to be more um, engaging with them. For example, um, students that will face the big challenge of uh, employability mm-hmm. after they graduate. And uh, I foresee a, a design crisis coming soon. And I believe that, um, that we will have to find alternative ways of uh, design education to help people to find jobs for after graduating from a program. So That's very um, interesting. So what, what, would, what would those ways be? I don't know, because, you know, um, we've seen this design, design is facing uh, massive challenges and creative mm-hmm. industries, they're facing massive challenges. So I think that to help students, going back to your previous question, uh, to help the students, we need to adjust our curriculum and we need to adjust our design education mm-hmm. to as we always did with design. And I think that technology plays an important role to the design process. And this is what we encourage students to do, to get more advanced with this. However, design thinking, as I said before, uh, it doesn't come with a tool. It's like going to the doctor. Like, I mean, uh, even if you give me a stethoscope, I know how to use it, but it doesn't, I cannot make a diagnosis if someone mm. is sick. So if I give the technology to someone, it doesn't make them a designer. So we need to, to teach them how uh, they can use critical thinking, design thinking with the current technology in order to, uh, to develop soft skills for the future. But uh, because talking about the crisis and how we can uh, help them identify themselves in, in, in the society and maybe that will bring a job later. I think that it goes back to the individuals and what they want to do mm-hmm. uh, with uh, what passion they have towards design because uh, design is not as uh, uh, a factory for cupcakes. They all taste the same, but they have different mm-hmm. color. Mm-hmm. I think that design education is about uh, more like an artisan mm. cake shop where you have exactly like you sell cakes, but actually they're all different. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. How can our viewers and listeners find you? How? How my, can our viewers and listeners best find you? Um, they can search online. Mm. <laughs> they can go to the University of Greenwich uh, website and they can find some information about me there. Uh, also, um, they can look on diversity and inclusivity by design website 
where they can get some materials and information about diversity and inclusion. Uh, this is a research area that we I'm leading and we work a lot in the University of Greenwich. And uh, we ex we're working with multicultural international um, researchers and designers exploring uh, issues of uh, inclusive design on uh, diverse practices and co-design methodologies. So yeah, so if you just Google me, I think um, that would be uh, the easiest way to do it. Brilliant. And my and name it, is very, it's very difficult to, 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 there are not many people with my name around, so I think it would, it would be an easy one. <laughs> Any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Well, I tell you, um, I think advice for what? For, uh, students or again, about again for people. professionals for for colleagues for i think it is this it, this is it, it is a time now i think for um to rethink our practices in general i think that there is uh i see that we change the way we think not necessarily because uh we are forced to because of the current situation, because of the COVID-19. But I think that we are rethinking about how to um, communicate with people. And uh, we are value more things now that we are isolated than before. So talking in design particularly, I want to see more actions of discussions between creative industries, be between the classroom or the studio practice in an institution, between the students and the professionals, where a discussion uh, can lead to, um, to better results that can change, in a way, the community, the society overall. So um, if it is a piece of advice, that would be talk more, discuss more, and approach. I would say, I would say mainly for the creative industries, um, have the courage to knock the door of an institution and say, we're here to help because that will change the way of people massively in the design world. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for your time and we'll see you soon, soon, soon. Thank you, Lefteris. Take care, all the best. <laughs>